I'd have to be honest to say that I never really considered that passage in the context, and, and I'm really big on putting passages in the context. So rather than just drawing it out, I would have to say that I see the creation of man as the finish of the sixth creation. Uh, just the lawyer in me just saying, I just, just a question. Jesus okay. is quiet on this subject? Jesus, um, the creation epic was completed it's, with the... Time out. Just advent. quiet on he didn't say when it was. He, he had a text. Are there any? I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just wondering. I thought you wanted me to comment on his text. No, no. Just, is, there, is there a phrase in the New Testament? Is there a question and answer? Is there a conversation with the Pharisees on this subject matter? None that I'm aware of. So now my question to three of you. With 40% of your colleagues, Michael, knowing something you don't know, and one verse from Matthew and no verses from the... Why does this debate matter to you three so much that you give so much time to it. And I'm very sincere about this because I don't spend any time on this at all as a believer. <laughs> Dr. Kent. Okay. Uh, well, you should see what Jesus said about lawyers. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. I, think, I think this subject is absolutely the most important subject in the world. I travel, I speak seven or eight hundred times a year. Uh, it's my 60, 76th flight this year already. I take this extremely seriously. The question is very simple. How do we tell right from wrong? But we could get into a discussion of all kinds of moral issues. You know, is adultery right or wrong? Is abortion right or wrong? Is murder right or wrong? It, you know, it doesn't matter what subject you discuss. Before you start a discussion on a moral issue, you first have to decide how you decide. Do we decide right and wrong based upon majority opinion? Do we decide right and wrong based upon what Congress thinks? Do we decide right and wrong based upon what Saddam Hussein thinks? How do we decide right from wrong? The issue to me is this creation versus evolution issue is absolutely central to all of humanity. Because if there's a God, then he tells us what's right and wrong. If there is no God, there is no possible way to tell right from wrong. And I would challenge the evolutionists. So I would, I would, I've challenged, I've asked this question to hundreds of evolutionists, and I'll ask it again tonight. If evolution is true, how do we tell right from wrong? Very simple. Well, um, in, in case, hello, you with me? Okay. Uh, in case I haven't mentioned yet, I do not believe in evolution. I'm just a person who believes that God's creation timeline took longer uh, than six literal days. Um, and this issue is important to me because, of, because there are people like Michael Shermer. Uh, there's a world out there who are struggling. Yeah, I, I don't want to typify you. I don't doubt that he's... I don't want to typify him as a struggling person, but I just want to say that there are people out there who, uh, who are are looking for an answer. I came to, I, I might as well mention that I also started out, uh, first of all, I started out like Michael Shermer, an evolutionist. I then became a theistic evolution because I thought, well, the Genesis 1 record really seems to corroborate with the evolutionary evidence. I worked my way up to Brother Hoven's view where I followed uh, Dr. Gish and, um, and others like him, Dr. Morris, and believed very strongly in what they had to say because it corroborated with the Bible. But it wasn't until I came to this point that where I realize that God can do something in a longer period of time if he wants to, and it could correspond to what the revelation in nature shows me has happened, that I believe that both of my, my belief in God and my understanding of science became real to me. And that has to happen because if you take to, if you, Throw out one half of it and say, well, nature just lied to us. It, everybody, in, everybody seems to think that it's 17 billion years, but it's really not. We know the Bible is true. I know the Bible is true. I know that nature said something reliable too. It says in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Their, their words to the end of the world. It transcends language. It sits out there. You go out tonight when you leave here, if you wonder if God can communicate and you look up at the skies 
and you watch what he's stretched out before you. It's from God. Michael. Well, I'm interested in the subject because uh, what's not to be interested in? You'd have to be made of wood not to be interested in the question of where we came from. So in my books and here and so forth, it's an intellectual journey. I think the, the journey itself, the process of thinking for yourself and thinking it through and listening to all the different theories and opinions and so on, that's where the action is, is trying to figure it out yourself. And um, I guess my take-home message is, you know, it's okay not to believe if you don't, or if you have some doubts or whatever, it's not going to kill you. It won't. It's okay. You can always reconvert tomorrow, if, just in case. <laughs> uh, I figure, you know, since I really did believe, and I, I really did, I was very serious about this, you know, I figure I'm in there just in case I'm wrong now. Uh, maybe it's a sort of a way station somewhere. I, I, there's different versions of this. I ask believers if I'm in there, just in case. Um, I do think that um, there's something... Um, I think deep within us that wants to know for whatever reason we have a big enough cortex to think about these huge questions and try to answer them. So for me, I, I do want to answer the question, where did morals come from if there is no God and how can you be good without God, which is the subject of my next book called Why We Are Moral. And uh, I, I, what could be more interesting than that? This is a hard scientific question to answer and I'm working on it. Don't worry, you're not a lawyer. Um, <laughs> It is 8.20. We will return here at 8.40 for part two. During the break, I was approached by one of you. What denomination do you belong to and why? I said, I am a Presbyterian for many reasons, but it is primarily the church in which I am least likely to be hugged. Please keep that in mind after <laughs> the break. Um, I was also, my dear friend Judge Anderson is here from your Court of Appeals. And uh, he stood up, he's the only other lawyer here, and, uh, and he averred as how perhaps you had sprayed for lawyers tonight, and uh, we're feeling very alone. Where are the rest of our panelists, if we can have Dr. Hoven and uh, Dr. Shermer come back out? Or maybe not. <laughs> Kyle, you'll get all 30 minutes. Now, uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to assign... Ten minutes, we discussed this, an iterative process, big word meaning we're just making it up as we go along. And ten minutes to each to hit the central points of their presentation. And then, uh, using, I'll do my Oprah. If you have a question, and I emphasize, a question involves an inquiry, not a statement, not a speech. We'll do three questions at a time and allow the panel to choose the one that most interests them. So it's kind of, um, what's that show? Uh, where well, you get thrown out when you're very boring and uninteresting. If your question doesn't make it, don't blame me. Uh, Michael Shermer, you're going to go first. Ten minutes. Uh, 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 you, you missed the huddle up back there, so. Are you ready, doctor? Go ahead. There, did I get it on? Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Well, these could go forever. Let me just share with you a few of the things that are typically used to support the evolution theory and how they've simply been proven wrong. It was mentioned tonight, I didn't get time to type, I typed about nine words a minute, so I didn't get time to get it down, but about there's, you know, there's evidence for this evolution that, you know, that we have evolved from some other type of creature. All the evidence that I'm aware of, and I taught biology for 15 years, all the evidence that's used to support this theory has been proven wrong. And I think these lies ought to be torn out of our textbook, okay? If you have evidence for your theory, show me, okay? Now, 